uh, this job has certainly made me closer to God uh, because you have to go into prayer often. So that's just the truth. So that's a positive, right? When you're getting closer to God. But I, I, I can't explain. Closer to God? When she was getting her back blown out by Nathan Wade and his wife was at home sick, was that her being closer to God? Well, it's election day down there in Fulton County, Georgia, and there's a primary to see who will be the Democratic nominee for DA, district attorney. And of course, we have our favorite, Fanny Pack Willis. Hey guys, it's your girl, Melanie. And today is election day down there in Fulton, um, Fulton County, Georgia. And as you know, DA um, Fannie Willis is running for re-election. And what better way than to, you know, to really give, you know, her, to help her win than for MSNBC, which I call BSNBC, to cape for her to, you know, come in and make her a sympathetic figure. You guys are not going to believe this BS interview. It, I mean, honestly, you are, because it's coming from BSNBC and it's Fannie Willis and Rachel Maddow. But you're going to want to watch this whole thing because <clears throat> it is, you know what? Let's just play it. I, I won't keep talking. Let, I want you to hear for yourself what they have to say. Hmm. Let me start by asking you um, ab about what your life has been like and, and how things have changed um, over the course of this past year. I know you have uh, bodyguards. I know you had to leave your home because of ongoing threats against you. Um, I saw footage last week in an event honoring the South Fulton police. You got a little bit emotional uh, thanking the police for having kept you safe in what has been a remarkably threatening environment for you. Um, I wondered what effect the sort of constant threat of violence that you've been living with has had on on you and on your ability to do your work? Um, well, thank you for asking. Not many people ask about what is the personal journey that's been going on. And it really hasn't been happening in the last year. It's been happening since about a month after I took office. Um, from the time I took office, I began to get threats. Uh, those threats come in the way of emails. Those threats come in the way of phone calls, um, text messages, any w which way you can imagine. Um, at some point, the threats became where I had to leave my home. And I've been out of my home since the first year in office. Um, they've come from a variety of sources. She's been in her little den of um, iniquity with uh, Nathan Wade, you know, while his wife was suffering through um, uh, a very, very terrible health problems. She was laid up with him. And, you know, she's trying to make it like it was because of Trump and what's going on with him. No, black people don't like her. And I've gone over that before. That's because, you know, people are dying in Fulton County jails, being unjustly um, held without representation, what she did with the YSL trial, and just like who she is, people don't like her. But this is the thing, you chose to be, chose this role. You chose to come into this and, and be the DA of Fulton County. This is what comes with the job, and now she wants to be sympathetic. And it's amazing that Rachel Maddow is talking about how the police are, you know, really helping and we want to thank the police. Then they want to defund the police. Then they say there's something wrong with having police. P police are bad. Police are wrong. Police are, you know, hurting black people. Police are hurting everybody. Isn't she, you know, I thought that was the stance. Isn't, doesn't she stand with BLM and, and all these other lunatics out here that feel that way? But suddenly when it's for them, oh, we need the police. I, I really appreciate them. Girl, stop. Um, one of the first things that ever happened was there was a protest at my house at five o'clock in the morning. Um, people mad because the last administration had left police cases, lots of them, and they wanted immediate action on them. And so that was the first thing that kind of happened. But the threats have certainly been about lots of different kinds of cases that I prosecuted. People are very unhappy with them um, because of some recent cases that most of them are racial in nature. Um, it has cost me to leave my home financially. I'm paying for, you know, my mortgage because I refuse to give up the home where I raise my children, but also paying for another establishment. And I have 24 hour um, really protection around me. So it, it's a very uh, interesting way to live, but it's well worth it. 
uh, to have the honor of being the first female district attorney in Fulton County, it pales in comparison to what my victims are going through. And the reality is one of the reasons we are upsetting people is we are so successful here in Fulton County. Um, I have the third largest crime drop in America. We have it because we're taking a balanced approach, both unapologetically going after gangs and violent criminals and anyone who should violate the law in my county, but we're also doing programs. And so it has been a huge sacrifice, but it's well worth it for my community. By programs, you mean the $500,000 that grant that was supposed to go to a program for at-risk youth that you misspent that money and have been investigated for by multiple agencies? By programs, do you mean the SA kit uh, program that you received $2 million in grant funds that you were supposed to be uh, doing the backlog of SA kits for to bring justice to those victims, which, you, you know, and that you misspent that money on travel and, and swag and whatever you wanted to, you know, are you, are those, yeah, those people are your victims. Those are your victims right there. Yeah, you are correct. And nothing pales in comparison to your personal victims. Uh, we spoke, uh, you did an interview um, with me um, earlier in your tenure, and we talked about um, what it was like to become a national lightning rod and to attract um, not just all the attention that a district attorney in a big place like Fulton County is always going to get locally for all of the important issues that affect the people of Fulton County, but to become a household name around the country, um, including by people who decided they were going to make your life hell uh, for having brought one particularly very high profile case. Um, do you feel like you've changed over the course of this term in office, over the, cur over the course of this, um, this four years in terms of having to develop new skills, new resources, um, develop a thicker skin than you might not have expected um, when you took this case, 20 when, you when, you when you ascended to office January 1st, 2020? Uh, this job has certainly made me closer to God uh, because you have to go into prayer often. So that's just the truth. So that's a positive, right? When you're getting closer to God. But I, I, I can't explain. Closer to God? When she was getting her back blown out by Nathan Wade and his wife was at home sick, was that her being closer to God? When she was at church and saying, I was not a whole Lord no more. Was that closer to God when she was defrauding the people of Fulton County using it as her personal piggy bank? Was that God when she was lying on the stand and committing perjury and the corruption and lying to the committees? And I, I, what? What? Just like Diddy, just like all of these criminals, they want to claim God when they're caught up. This this, you know, and I notice it's mostly black people. Why are we always, why are we letting these people, these politicians, these celebrities claim God when they are far from it? She, when she stood up in church and lied and she's blaming everything on her race and her gender and all these other things. Rachel Maddow don't even, did not even, in BSNBC believe in God? Like what? To you how much I love the work that I do. I can't explain to you how loved I feel by my community. Uh, you really should feel sorry for those that are trying to deter me from my work. It doesn't do anything but motivate me to continue to work and to work hard. Um, and so I'm not someone that's going to be broken, but certainly it is caused me to get thicker skin or to be more resilient, to dig deeper, to work harder. Uh, but what it has not done is deter me from my work. Let me ask you about um an interesting development that happened with a former Democratic governor of, of Georgia, um, Governor Roy Barnes. Um, it emerged over the course of the, the Trump case and some of the, um, forgive me, the Michigas around that, uh, that you had. Have you noticed that she's trying to dance around? It's the Trump case she didn't want to say at first. And then her being this disqualification hearing on her. It's like they don't want to say it. Like, what is this tap, tiptoe and tap dancing? On this, you know, this poor, this poor, I mean, she's just like Harriet Tubman fighting for freedom for us people. It, it's like, this is just, oh. Asked Governor Barnes if he would consider joining the prosecution as a special counsel um, in that case. And it emerged that he said no, saying, quote, I wasn't going to live with bodyguards for the rest of my life, which is a commentary on what it takes to be part of the legal system in this era, taking on politically powerful people. Um, but Governor Barnes, as far as I understand it, has since offered that if the Republican-controlled legislature in Georgia 
comes after you with this new investigative committee that they seem to have formed specifically to come after you um, with some of the other ways that they seem to be targeting you, that if you need legal representation um, of a specialty form as part of the way they're coming after you through the legislature, that he will represent you in those matters. I just wanted to ask if that's your understanding and, and what you make of, of that, uh, those interactions that you've had with former Governor Barnes. No, Governor Barnes is my attorney. Uh, the They have decided in Georgia that they would like to come over after me. Um, they use false reasons for wanting to come after me. Um, I don't know if you remember, and I believe we talked about it last time. Um, Georgia had never had a prosecutorial oversight committee, and all of a sudden, 14 minorities were elected to office to serve as district attorney. And now all of a sudden they need an oversight committee to look after district attorneys because they want to tell us how to prosecute and who to prosecute and where we should put our resources. As opposed to allowing the voters that put us in these seats to make those determinations. Um, the voters in my community are very clear that they want crime rid out of their communities, but they want it done both by removing violent offenders, which is what we have done. Um, we've gone after gangs and we've worked with our police departments to do so. But they also want second chances for low level offenders. And we have done those programs. What is so ironic is although it's only 14 of the 50 DAs in the state of Georgia, most of the citizens report to our jurisdictions. So although we're smaller in number than the other 36, most of the population has elected these minority DAs to serve them and has trusted their judgment. But apparently we now need daddy to tell us how to do our job. <laughs> Y'all, look at this fool. She actually, she said how to tell us do our job. She doesn't think she should have any oversight. They want to tell us how we should do our job, how we should spend our money. It's not your money. The taxpayers wouldn't know how you're spending the money if people weren't investigating you. Like they play this whole thing as though she is some type of victim. She's it, like, she, it, poor her. And, and oh, and because she's minority and it should be, it's all, it's been a min minorities in these different districts that she's talking about about all this time. It's just the fact that we've had citizen journalists and other people actually dig into, finally for the first time, dig into what's actually going on in your corrupt office to figure out what these things are going on. So now it's like, okay, things need to be investigated. When you decided to commit lawfare and go after Trump and his co-defendants on a case that is a dud that has no merit, and I've went over how the voter GA independent audit down there in, in Fulton County, I mean, sorry, in all of Georgia and how corrupt it was down there, how there really is no case. And she decided to take on this case in particular or big cases so she can make a name for herself. She's the one that decided to uh, uh, allegedly collude with the White House, meeting with the White House, and, 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 and do everything improper. So this is what these criminals do. And then they're aided and abetted by people, by, by BSNBC to do these things. But guys, I, I just, I'm, my blood pressure, I got to calm down. But the fact, look at how they are trying to spin her as some victim. The whole thing was about how, you know, she's really doing her job. They didn't even want to ask any hard questions. This is just a softball, you know, woe is me as a black woman who did no wrong thing. When this is a woman, she holds public office. I don't care if she's a woman, man. I don't care if she's black, white, purple or blue. She needs to be held accountable for the crimes and things that she has done. If there was nothing there, there wouldn't be nothing to investigate. Even her own, even Democrats are calling her out and saying the crimes that she has committed in office, the collusion. She's the one that decided to hire her uh, sugar baby boyfriend to do this. And then Roy Barnes, the former governor's representing me. And we don't get about that old man representing you. Like we, we're scared now. We's a scared. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry. I'll calm down. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that uh, notification bell because there's a second part to this interview that I'm going to do and you're not going to want to miss. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a good one. Bye.